All right, welcome to Witch Police Radio. I'm here with a returning guest. Uh, it's been probably about a year or so since we last spoke on the podcast, and um, yeah. I think that my my previous interview with with the guest on this episode was uh, sort of an, an unexpected success in the sense that a lot of people listened to it, and I got some really good feedback about it because it was sort of stepping a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, with the podcast, I mean, I talked to, you know, countless uh, punk bands or country singers or, or uh, rappers or what, whatever it may be. But um, I think that you're doing something that's, that's very different and, and still connected to the local music scene. So uh, I'm happy to have you back on the show. And I think Thank the you. best way to start this off is if you want to introduce yourself and give a bit of background about who you are and what you do as an artist. Yeah, thank you very much, Sam. Well, first of all, I'd like to say belated Happy New Year to you and your followers. Um, it's good to be back on the show. And yes, it's just shy of one year, I think, since I was on here promoting a different project. Yeah. So just to reiterate, my name is Adele M. Wilding. I'm a professional jazz singer, songwriter, composer, and I'm also an educator. Um, I have led my career on both sides of the Atlantic. I um, have also worked out west um, eight and a half years out west in Alberta, followed by a successful five-year stint on the West Coast. And then, of course, four years ago, the pandemic happened, and I was dealing with some other personal issues, and I took that as a wake-up call from the universe that maybe it was time just to head home and just resume everything that I was doing as an artist cool. back here in Manitoba. And it's great to be here. Great to be back here. Yeah. So I, I would say I've been in Manitoba about two and a half years, maybe a little bit shy of that. And I've been working the local jazz scene and offering one-on-one um, -on -one teaching as well as freelance um, educational projects in and around uh, Winnipeg. Well, and I guess the educational side of things is what we're going to be talking about mostly today, because uh, last time you were on the show, we were also getting into that. You were doing a, a workshop on uh, sort of the history and tradition of, of spirituals, and um, that was something very unique. And um, I guess before we get into the new thing, how did that go over? What was the what was that program like, and, and how was it received? Uh, the workshop that I did, the vocal workshop, which was offered in March of last year, went very well. It was successful. Um, my director at the Manitoba Conservatory of Music and Arts was very happy with it. Our participants were happy. And um, I was pleased that I was be able to offer that um, particular topic in a wider sense as well, too. I took it to another ensemble between October and December of last year oh, cool. and used that as a vehicle to enable them to sing, um, to be inspired to sing. And we also use the songs in a private showcase for them to perform in front of their loved ones. Oh, cool. But yeah, getting back to your original question, yes, the Spirituals Vocal Workshop went very well. And I suppose our topic for today is actually piggybacking off the success of that. Definitely. So, I mean, I have, I do have a lot of questions about this one. It's, it, I think it's, a, it's an yeah. exciting topic just because mm -hmm. of the sort of breadth of, of different styles and, and genres and sounds that it could potentially cover. But Absolutely. what can you tell me about the new workshop? What is the what is the uh, the theme and the background and what are you hoping to uh, sort of impart to, uh, to, to singers? So to coincide with and observe Black History Month 2024, which, of course, officially starts on fe February 1st, excuse me, on the first, actually, the, the first four Thursdays of February, February 1st, 8th, 15th, and 22nd, I will be returning to the adult programs at the Manitoba Conservatory of Music and Arts, and I will be offering a workshop called Music of the Caribbean Vocal Workshop. Um, for anybody who doesn't know me on a personal level, I identify as an Anglo West Indian Canadian. So I was born in the UK to first generation British and first generation West Indian parents. The West Indian side was on my late mother's side. Okay. She was originally from Barbados. She was born and raised there. And like a lot of West Indians in the 40s and 50s post World War II, she went abroad to do some training and to see the world. And it was her love of nursing and a particular psychiatric nursing program just uh, northeast of London, England, that sparked her interest in that country and took her to England. And she met my father and they 
were together for seven years before they married and had my brother and myself. And then in the mid sixties, Canada was calling. That was kind of a place where a lot of people were moving to, sure. particularly from the UK and we settled in Manitoba. So that is why I am, I'm a, you know, a Canadian citizen. We all are now. So yeah. that's why I identify with those three cultures. So I guess you could say my brother and I were third culture kids. Well, and that's that's not uncommon. I, I mean, yeah. I feel like there's a very, very large kind of West Indian diaspora in, in Canada. I mean, all over all over the place. Winnipeg, especially. Yes. I mean, I, mean, I know places oh. like Toronto have much larger yeah. populations, but Winnipeg has a very strong yeah. community of people from, from, from any one of those islands or having roots in, in Jamaica or Trinidad or Barbados. So, I mean, there, there's a, yes. just a very, very strong... Uh, culture here and that i find that a lot of people from that background are also involved in the music scene and have taken those roots and, and sort of uh reinterpreted them and, and and remixed them almost in different ways to create new things so it's, it's very cool to see that happening here yeah that is absolutely spot on sam and i find too as you alluded to the further east that you go in canada the larger the west indian sure. population so winnipeg you know, we're called the heart of the country and the heart of the continent for a reason, because we're right smack in the middle of this huge uh, body of land. And of course, we have a large uh, West Indian community here, along with our African diaspora as well. Sure. And then Toronto has a huge West Indian community, as does Montreal. And of course, Montreal has a particularly large Haitian community. Uh, of course, because the French, the French yes. language side of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So... We, we fit in very well here, and it was a, easier for us as a family to be able to um, travel abroad. Like our parents, they would take us from one coast of Canada to the other. So every summer we were either traveling in Canada, or we went to somewhere in the States, or we would go back to England or to Barbados to visit family because they wanted their children to have this well-rounded knowledge of the world. For and sure. also to appreciate the country that we called home well so. and as as we kind of touched on here i mean the caribbean is 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 a i mean geographically a small place but there's so many different cultures and so many different countries and so many mixes of cultures uh in each one of those islands how do you sort of approach something as, as wide of a topic as as music of the caribbean because i think that people have maybe different associations with it but each country has sort of developed their own styles of music very very distinctly that that are that are that are different and 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 have different appeal and, and different sort of cultural roots and it, it's really cool to sort of um hear sort of you know something that's not very far away geographically but the sound is totally different and they, they've, they've taken totally different influences from one island to another absolutely i think it's one of the most diverse regions in the world i believe and, it, yeah. yes and as you said there are so many diverse streams that have developed out of the music for that region. And I have to be honest with you, Sam, even though it's half of my heritage, it's half my culture, this has probably been the most challenging workshop I've ever had to prepare because okay. I had to narrow it right down. The number of musicians alone that have originated from the West Indies, there are a lot of them. You don't hear about them in the mainstream, yeah. obviously. Well, not here anyway. No, not I'd say in the Western mainstream, except for a few. Yeah. But over there, certainly, you know, we'd go on holidays and we'd hear this music all the time and we'd learn about these artists. And the good thing about growing up in a mixed household was that a good portion of the music that we listened to, if we weren't listening to um, rock, British rock at the time, because my dad was a huge fan. He was also a huge Elvis fan. Um, if we weren't listening to rock or Western classical music, which was also part of my dad's um, musical palette. Okay. We were listening to Calypso and variations of Calypso like Soca yeah. and Reggae. And that was courtesy of my mom's side of the family. And I remember very recently before Christmas when I mentioned to my dad that I would be compiling this workshop, he had said to me, well, you know what? I didn't even know what Calypso was until I met your mother. Oh, wow. it's, a, it's a style of music because he's a first generation um, Caucasian Englishman. So he was born and raised in England. And when the West Indians started moving into uh, England, post uh, Second World War in the late 40s and the 50s, yeah. 
he was kind of remote because he was in the home counties, which are the regions outside of London. So he was slightly remote from all that. But then he met mom in their nurses training. And that's how he was introduced to Calypso music. And he loved it. And you see my dad wearing like traditional um, dress from the West Indies, which has strong African influences. Sure. And we'd have parties where we'd have a mixture of, of British, Canadian and West Indies coming over to the house in small town Manitoba. And dad would be dancing away and singing away to this Calypso music. And that's the beauty of music because it just unites everybody. And I know it's a cliche, but it really did have that effect on our family. For sure. And I think I think on a lot of families, yeah. too, is is the way that music from different cultures kind of seeps in and becomes part of just part of your soundtrack to, to your life. I mean, like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm white. My dad's from England and I got into reggae oh, right. heavily from him because yes. he brought when he came Absolutely. to Canada, he was listening to a lot of Jamaican music because, you know, the, it was big in the culture at the time when he was growing up. So I listened to probably more reggae than anything else um still and that, that comes from yeah. you know and it, it's unlikely because i'm a white canadian kid who doesn't have any familiar connection to to jamaica or to, to the west indies but because yes. through filtered through england i now have that and and it's it's one of those things that i think keeps happening with with music from that part of the world it, it gets it gets it sneaks in through different styles of music and through different weird little uh, pathways and gets embedded in people who maybe you don't expect would be uh initially interested in absolutely and it's interesting that you mentioned that point about your dad and how reggae was a huge style in england it certainly was especially in the 60s and that's when he was listening to it yeah exactly and of course england was full on into the swinging 60s particularly london and reggae was making its way into the dance halls of um 60s britain yeah and this is where um you know, Caucasian British children, or children, I should, I should rephrase that, uh, teenagers yeah. are going into the dance halls and listening to the, the music. And presumably that's how your father was introduced to it. And then that that exposure turned into, uh, you know, people of all backgrounds in England playing their own variations on that. And that's when you got the, the two-tone scene and bands like the Specials and things like that. And then coming to the, that influencing American and Canadian bands. And then me being a teenager in the in the 90s hearing that. And, and I was in a ska band uh, in, in, in the 90s here in Winnipeg. Oh, love ska. Through that, yeah. <laughs> that weird connection of, you know, and it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's one of those things. I think that more than any other style of music, I think that uh, Jamaican ex- music especially, just because that's what I've been most exposed to, has that... Yes. that that staying power that it, it just keeps sort of changing with the times and, and and finding new ways to attract people to what is a pretty like at its core simple basic rhythm but it, it it's it glues itself onto different styles and 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 helps them sort of morph into something new every every decade or so it's really cool absolutely now just before we progress with that point yeah i just want to make sure my eye contact if i look at you like this can you see me? Is my yep. eye contact even good? Yep. Because sometimes with different devices, it can be nope. different. And I want to make sure I'm addressing you in the, yep, the sure audience. Are, yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And when I was doing some research, because I've also presented um, and prepared, prepared and presented an online course for the MCMA, which was through their Music Equals program. And it was on the history of West Indian music. And we tapped into the British years and yeah. the the influence of reggae, not just on British teenagers, but also a lot of artists that were com- coming out at the time as well, too. And I came across these wonderfully authentic interviews from BBC journalists interviewing kids coming out of reggae festivals or reggae um, shows in London, like in yeah. Shepherd's Bush and Hammersmith and all the places where all the you know, the top bands used to play back in the day. And the journalists would say the same thing. Well, what is it that attracts you to this music? It's not part of your culture inherently. What yeah. is it that attracts you? And everybody they interviewed, all these teenagers say it's the beat. They just like the beat. And these are teenagers who are a new generation, post-World War II, looking for something to help give them an identity. And of course, this saw itself in fashion. We saw it with, with the mods, like yeah. the Quadrophenia film. That's what that was based sure. on. And then in music, they're looking for something new and something, I guess, to lift them out of that whole context of having, you know, being part of a, a huge war that impoverished the country. And then all of a sudden, 
swinging 60s. Yeah. Women are wearing, you know, these, these these great styles and, you know, their mini skirts and their leather boots up to their knees and the men are wearing three-piece suits. And then along comes reggae and boom, it hits yeah. the dance hall scene in a big in a big way. And then before you know it, then you start seeing these bands like UB40 and bands that were coming out of the 70s and going into the 80s. And I think around the punk time too, there was a ska movement. There was, yeah, the two-tone movement. Yeah, yeah, that's right, the two-tone movement that you mentioned. And then I think of Madness. Yeah, I love Madness. Yeah, yeah great yeah, Madness. I do too. They had a great hit called Baggy Trousers with that yep. real ska beat. So for anybody who's not too familiar with ska, it's very quick and off the beat. And this song was baggy trousers, into into baggy trousers, into baggy trousers. Ba ba ba. I can hear it now. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a great, great song, song. Great song. Yeah. yeah well, the, yeah. the one step beyond album actually is that's that's the first. That was my introduction to Sky. Is my dad's old oh, record. Okay. I still have a copy of that record. His his LP, okay. and I, I listen to it all the time. Like that that madness and the specials and the yes. selector and all those bands from England in the seventies. Yes. That that you know right around the punk era too. Yeah, that that was sort of what got me into Sky. And then I backtracked and then yes. got into uh, you know reggae and then back to the the early Sky from the sixties and sort of really absorbed all that. But yeah. I, I could talk about this all day because I love being oh. hard about, about reggae and ska, yeah. but there's so Me many too. other styles. I mean, you mentioned Calypso, yeah. you mentioned Soka. There's yes. also a lot of styles uh, in the Caribbean that are ha have influences from um, immigrants to those islands from, from India. There's a lot, a lot uh, and places oh, like yes. that. There's all these different yeah. styles like chutney and uh, different styles of music. Yeah. How much of that are you covering in, in these workshops? Well, given the amount of time that I have been allocated and given that it's a four-week course, Right. And 90 minutes per week, you think, oh, I've got all the time in the world. But when you're when these workshops get underway, you realize, no, I don't. I gotta get cracking here. I bet, yeah. So I am devoting part of one week to Soka, okay. which is like an abbreviation for soul of Calypso. Right. Something to that effect. And that's Trinidad and, based, right? That's right. Yes, it came out of Trinidad, and it's the result of West African music from way back when. That the the rhythms and the grooves of West African music that fused with grooves from India. And if anybody wants to check out a really good soca artist, there's a a lady in England, like myself. She's of Barbadian heritage. She was born in England. Her name's. Alison Hines? Yeah. Yeah. Queen of Soka. Okay, so check her out. Just And um, she has promoted Soka in West Indian festivals worldwide. And that's what Soka is. And there was a comedy, when I was based in the UK as an adult, there was a comedy called Desmond's. Okay. And it was about a Trinidadian, first-generation Trinidadian barber who immigrates to England. He comes over on the HMS Windrush ship. And I don't want to get too off topic. I might come to back to that a little bit later. No, but that was like, the iconic wind. Windrush generation, right? That's, uh, That's what right. we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like my mother and her siblings were too, the Windrush generation that came over on a ship. Yeah. Initially, there was about 500 West Indian immigrants from Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago. And they arrived in the, the British docks, the Tilsbury docks. And made England their home. And this comedy was about one such West Indian immigrant named Desmond, and he opens up a barbershop in Southeast London. And the theme is called Don't Touch My Soka. And if you uh, Google that, or if you go on YouTube and search for it, it will come up and it's da 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 so it's like a faster version of Calypso. Now she got this boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom, boom. So I will be touching on Soka for part of one of the weeks that um, I will be presenting. Another style that emerges from the West Indies is Spouge. Okay. Now, Where's that, where is that from? <laughs> it's That's a new one for Bar me. <laughs> it's actually from Barbados. And um, it was actually... It was founded by an artist by the name of Jackie Opal. Okay, yeah. 
And he took a little bit of everything. And this is something that I might need to refer to my notes to because there's so many styles that are involved in spouge. But um, it's Calypso. There's some American jazz and R&B in there. There's ska in there. There's even sea shanties and hymns in there. Cool. Those, those were all the music that he gravitated towards. So Jackie Opal, who incidentally was nicknamed the Sam Cooke of Barbados, he actually did a lot of cover songs, um, maybe more so than his original songs, okay. but he did a lot of cover songs. And one of them was Sam Cooke's You Send Me, which was a huge hit for him. Yeah. And he took all those styles that I mentioned and he just fused, fused them into Spouge. But the underlying feel there is Calypso. So Spouch originated from Barbados because Jackie Opal was Barbadian. Um, sadly, like Sam Cooke, we lost him early. Uh, he was the victim of a car accident. This is Jackie uh, Opal. Yeah, yeah. He, he was the victim of a car accident at age 32 in the year 1970. Oh, wow. That's pretty but young, yeah. It is. It's very young. And it's sometimes I think our geniuses are taken away from us a little bit too soon because he was the only one doing that music. He created it. So if you want to check it out, I strongly recommend that you you go on YouTube and just key in Jackie Opel, O-P-E-L, and check out some of the covers that he's done with this Spouge style. So cool. we'll be doing a little bit of that. So so can Spouge I'll be touching on in one of those classes. And then I'm assuming that, that the reggae is going to take up a big part of it as well, just because oh, of its international yes. impact. Absolutely. And can I just add to with Calypso, Harry Belafonte is going to be featured in that as well, too, because he took Calypso and he crossed over into every culture, every style. Everybody loves Harry Belafonte. Yeah, yeah. You know, he definitely internationalized that, that style of music for sure. He certainly did. Um, and because of his, his background, too, he's has a very vast background because as we were discussing earlier in this conversation, the Caribbean is a very mixed region. Like when you mention Caribbean, people tend to think of maybe one particular culture and that's fine because there is a certain culture that dominates. Yeah. But there's so many others and it's a result of the, and I need to say it, the colonial settlement. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the truth. So Harry Belafonte, on his mother's side, he had Scottish Jamaican and African Jamaican. Okay. And even though he was born in the United States, his father had African American in him and Dutch and Jewish. Oh, interesting. Okay. So he's got, you know, he had quite a mixture there. And I think maybe that, um, well, how do I put it? But I, I, he just had this ability to be able to transcend any kind of boundaries. And you think about the time that we emerged to like 50s, it was rock and roll that was bringing everybody together in a very divided country yeah, where yeah. one group was oppressed and the other group was the oppressors. And Harry Belafonte took it one step further by taking this traditional music and as commercializing it around the world. Yeah. I, rem do you, I don't know if your father went to this concert, but Harry Belafonte was in Winnipeg back in the late 70s. Oh, cool. I think it was 1977. It was somewhere between 77 and 79. And my parents took my brother and I to this concert. We were, we were still young, so I'm giving away my age, but we went to this concert. And I have found out decades later that I know people who've actually attended that concert. I just didn't know them at the time. Right, right. Like, like a, a dear friend of mine, her parents were at the concert. And a couple of... Um, retired uh, students and performers that I work with, that I coach with privately, they were at the concert. So you see, it just goes to show you the the magnetic appeal yeah. that this particular artist had through his popularization of Calypso music throughout the world. Well, and I think a cool thing about that too is that Calypso, I mean, despite on the surface, Calypso is very... Um upbeat, very, very, very positive, joyful kind of music, but it was also used very heavily for sending political messages and having, you know, much deeper oh. um, content wise. I mean, yeah. so some of the, some of the biggest songs of, of the genre are, are kind of not so subtly, 
making a point about something about social issues or about political issues. And it, it was almost like a um a great way to get people to sort of hear what you have to say because you're 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 inviting them in with this sound that is that is very um that they they can gravitate towards, but then they're hearing what you're saying, and that that's, that's a whole like other level and with reggae as well in a, in a huge way. I mean, and yeah. Scott and all of these genres is sort of a way to use music to, to to talk about what's going on and talk about struggle and talk about um all all of these factors. Absolutely, and calypso. Reggae in particular had a lot of very strong messages, especially about social issues. For sure. And the, and the lack of activity and action taken by the establishment. They yeah. They kind of poked fun at, sort of mocked in a tongue-in-cheek way. Yeah. For not dealing with certain social issues. And this would all, often find itself in the lyrics. And with Calypso music as well, Calypso started out very tongue-in-cheek. And there's an interesting parallel, if I may, just very quickly point out to you. So when we discussed the spirituals last year, yeah, and we were saying how spirituals, the lyrical content of spirituals, um, reflected the conditions in which the enslaved from Africa had to endure when they were working um, the plantations and the fields in America, yeah, as we know yeah. it today. So in the West Indies, because the West Indies were a core area for the transatlantic slave trade, as were the other Americas, what we know now as North America and South America, etc. The songs that came out of the Western African tradition in the West Indies actually had lyrical content that was very cheeky and also actually poked fun at the, the slave owners. Sure. Okay, in so a way that they wouldn't understand, right? Exactly. And, and the slave owners, of course, were oblivious to what was being sung. Um, but anyway, so that was the lyrical content. But as you say, um, those styles, Calypso and Reggae, have been used to transport messages, whether they're political or social or historical. And there's an early style of Reggae known as Mento. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah mento, it's the earliest form of Jamaican folk music. And it's the precursor to ska and reggae. And Harry Belafonte is actually fundamentally a mentor artist. But because Calypso had more of a commercial ring to it in terms of tourism and attracting people to the Caribbean, he was always marketed as a Calypso artist and nobody <laughs> really made a fuss about it. But the one thing I wanted to point out about mentor, the reason I mentioned it is because there's a wonderful song that sings about the abdication of Edward, King Edward, yep. on the throne so that he could marry Wallace Simpson. And it's called Love, Love Alone. Okay. There's a wonderful sort of very refined version by Harry, Harry Belafonte. And the earliest version, which is from one of the earliest um, sort of mental artists by Lord Flea and his Calypsonians. He was also, you know, yeah. Calypso artist as well. He has a wonderful organic um, take on it. So if I can just quote his lyrics. Go for it, yeah. So the chorus is, love, love alone caused King Edward to leave his throne. It was love, love alone that caused King Edward to leave his throne. And then the verse that I, that's in the Lord Flea version, the earlier version is, take my money, take my goat, but please leave me with my fishing boat. So they're kind of taking this very stately, noble monarch. Yeah. And talking about what he was dealing with when he was abdicating it by putting it more in layman's terms and layman's lyrics if that makes sense yes it does yeah that, that's very cool so yeah. um i mean there, there's there's so much history in all these genres and we could we, like again we could talk about this forever but Absolutely. how can people find out more information about the workshop you're doing how, how, where can someone go to find out you know when it's happening uh what information what they need to know about uh participating and things like that Sure. The, the most obvious place would be to go on the Manitoba Conservatory of Music and Arts website, which I believe is ncma.ca. And if that turns out to be the incorrect name, you can just Google them, Manitoba Conservatory of Music and Arts. I'll link to it in the show notes too, so people can uh, click on oh, the Oh, please the do. Yep. Absolutely. And when you get to adult programs, which is towards the bottom of the homepage, you click on that link. And then 
you'll see these programs and there's some wonderful programs there from John Einerson and I'm over here somewhere on the right if you're looking at it and you'll see music of the Caribbean vocal workshop. Cool. And then and you click that one. Yes. And it starts February, February Black History Month is obviously the perfect time mm -hmm. for this. Absolutely. It starts February 1st and it runs weekly for the first four Thursdays in February because obviously this February is a, is a late month. We're in a leap year. Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah, so, we are. Right. Yeah. That's right. So we're running the 1st, the 8th, the 15th, and the 22nd. And it will take place on the campus at the Manitoba Conservatory of Music and Arts, and it will run from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Cool. And in true workshop style, or in my true workshop style, I always like to have a little showcase that anybody from the public can attend just to see what the participants have been working on for the past few weeks. So there will be a showcase during the fourth and final week on February 22nd, and that will roughly start just before 8 p.m. Oh, cool. Okay, so people can actually get an opportunity to, to, to see the culmination of, of these four weeks of, of workshop. Cool, cool. Exactly, and we did this last year with the Spirituals Workshop too, and it's a nice way for the participants to round off the program and show off all the work that they've been doing. Um, and also on my socials too, I've been promoting it on my socials. You can find me on Facebook under Adele M. Wilding Jazz. And then I'm under A.M. Wilding Jazz on Instagram. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you're doing this. Um, it, yeah, it's, 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 it's very neat to see like this sort of other aspect of, of, of music in, in Manitoba because there's, there's so much, um, like, I mean, I've been doing this for 11 years now and the, the amount of people that I haven't talked to yet is, is, uh, is like this expansive list, but even going beyond sort of the bands that are playing every night, there, there's so many people doing stuff like you that are just sort of, uh, you know, to the side of of the regular, um, you know, bands that are playing every night, but also very uh, deeply embedded in what's going on in the Winnipeg music scene. So it's, it's always cool to talk to you. Absolutely. And I'd just like to make one more um, sure. point as well, too. I, as an artist, um, back in 2017, I founded a project, a live music project called Caribbean and Blue. Okay. And I initially founded it as um, a tribute to my mother, Vera, who, as I've already explained, um, was born and raised in Barbados. Yeah. And I founded it in Vancouver, where I happened to be based at the time. Um, we lost mother in 2019, so I now perform it in her honor as well as her memory. And basically what I do is I take contemporary jazz standards, quite a few of them with the word blue in them, because I've been a lifelong fan of that color. And I add some of these grooves to them. So there's Calypso, oh, cool. there's some soca, and there's some reggae. So just keep an eye on my socials because I will be reviving that live music project again too this year. Oh, that's great. That's really cool yes. to hear. Awesome. 